Okay, so I, I guess I'll start. My name is Timothy Hobbs. Um, I like to thank Prezi just because this is a really beautiful place and so far it's been great. But uh, I'm going to present visual programming. And uh, well, why am I interested in visual programming? I am really into open source or free software, or however you're going to call it. And I'm into that dream of having software that I'm able to modify myself. I want to be able to rip open my software, find the bit of code that I need to change and change it within hours, days. Usually when I pull something from Git or SVN or whatever they use, I have this directory tree, I press ls, and it shows me a bunch of files and I don't know what those files are. And I've only seen a couple projects where they even have like a description of what the modules are supposed to do. Mostly I just go there. At the beginning of each module, there's a GPL license and it doesn't tell me anything about what the module does because it's just a license. And then there's code. And so this is my frustration. My eternal frustration with open source is that open source, despite the GPL saying that the code should be uh, exchanged in a modifiable form, code isn't modifiable. It's not easy for us to orient ourselves in it. And when I come to a conference like this, I see a lot of people presenting and they're drawing things up on the board with diagrams to explain to me how their code works. So I'll be able to go and look inside their system and understand it. And so the dream with visual programming is to be able to program in such a way that you create something that other people will look at and they'll understand. Unfortunately, visual programming isn't there uh, at all. Um, if you go to thobs.cz, uh, my website, you'll see this rather minimalist website that doesn't have much on it. But you will see a <coughs> link, graphical elm, and if you want to, you can follow along with me. And the first slide, uh, well, anyways, you can see here uh, in a very uh, oversized uh, minus, uh, yes. Command minus, 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 minus. Okay, so this is the state of the art visual signal processing. It's not discrete signals, it's real time signals. And this is a synth application. It's used by musicians. They connect a tool up through ports with wires to other tools that transform the sound signal in some way until they finally get to the mixer and to the out. Uh, it's not very easy to understand. There's a couple problems here. Uh, the main problem for me is these cables are overlapping and I have to trace them with my fingers in order to, like look at this cable right here, to create an infinite loop and you're just like, where did that come from? So from a visual standpoint, visual programming doesn't do it. It doesn't, do its, it doesn't achieve its goal because it creates visual clutter on the screen. And worse, this is really hard to manipulate because you need to switch between using the mouse and using the keyboard in order to manipulate such a diagram. Uh, you click and drag, and then you double click on one of these components and a dialogue appears, and you have a text box that you can edit to change various values, properties of the transformation. So, uh, I don't like this. It's not easy to use and it's not even performant because drawing all of these cables is kind of slow. So uh, I created a different method of uh, doing visual programming. I'm not going to actually do anything on the screen right now. Uh, my method is uh, rather than drawing this network of cables on the screen, I'm going to transform a graph into a levelized graph which is a list of list of nodes. And that's what you can see here in graphical Elm. If I do command plus, you can see up at the first line of uh, nodes, each one of these is a node. Uh, each one of these words is a node in our Elm signal graph. Uh, the first line of nodes has no parents or no dependencies. The second line 
has dependencies that are only fulfilled by the first line. If I come over uh, uh, <coughs> command arrows, I can't do control arrow keys on the Mac. I want to move around by doing control arrow keys. Okay. No, I need control arrow keys. Where does it do? It moves my screen. My no, no, no. My Elm program uh, is sampling uh, on control arrow. <laughs> okay, well, if I was on Linux and I had a working operating system, I would be able to demonstrate this. <laughs> but I don't have that. Control down does this. Control up does that. Command down does page up and page down. <laughs> So, <laughs> let me get out. <laughs> what should I do? Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just continue explaining this while he's working on his Mac. Uh, so, the first level has no dependencies. The next level depends only on uh, things that were fulfilled by the first level. Uh, and so, I get this um, table of nodes, which I can move around with the arrow keys. I don't need to click on things. I don't need to use the mouse. Uh, and it's also completely text-based. And so uh, it should be faster to render. It should be as fast to render as using Vim, where it's instantaneous. Unfortunately, it's not. But I think uh, when the dev branch gets a little bit more mature and collages are working better, it'll get a lot faster, I hope. <laughs> Is it good? OK. So, um, <laughs> what? You can turn off the same screen. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll continue presenting. Uh, <laughs> so, right now you don't see any connections between the uh, nodes, but you see that there's color coding. Here, window height or window width is green, right? Uh, and then clock radius is blue. When you have seconds selected, digital clock face, seconds per cent is blue, seconds is green, and time is red. So uh, you know that time is going to flow into seconds, and then from seconds, information is going to flow from digital clock face to seconds per cent. Uh, I guess when I was looking at Elm, the Elm source code just the other day, I wanted to edit uh, the way JavaScript was uh, generated. So I started editing the JavaScript generation code in Elm, and all of a sudden, the, uh, when I recompiled Elm, I got different results, because actually the core code for Elm is compiled using whatever JavaScript pretty printer Evan has. Uh, so, I wasn't expecting that, but here, if I want to edit seconds, uh, I know exactly what, is a, what seconds is affected by, but I also know exactly what editing seconds will affect. So I can't, don't have the uh, experience of editing some bit of code and then having unexpected effects from my edits, because I know that the only nodes that are affected by seconds are digital clock face seconds per, and seconds per cent. Uh, so, if I want to understand this code, uh, I can go to, for example, time, and I know that it flows down from time to seconds, minutes, hour. It flows from seconds to, to digital clock face, or seconds per cent. It flows from seconds per cent to seconds angle. It flows from seconds angle to seconds hand, seconds hand x, and down to seconds hand path, and down to seconds hand, to analog clock face, to main. Uh, so that's the basic outline of this program. Of course, there's also code inside of these nodes. So these nodes are all connected up, and they also do something. Uh, the neat thing about Elm's signal graphs is it really doesn't matter what's inside one of these nodes, what it's doing, or like how it's doing it. It just has to be a referentially transparent pure function. And so, even though Elm signal graphs are built into Elm, they're not Elm specific. 
I can run Elm code there, but I can also run some other programming languages code there. And so in my prototype here, I've uh, got two languages. This example is only written in Elm. If I go F4 over uh, to code, uh, then I can see that uh, window height is window dot uh, is a uh, window dot height right here. Uh, but if I go over to, for example, seconds, it's a remainder of round in seconds t sixty something like that. So that's the code there. Um, so time. Uh, Wait a second, I, I didn't read you the entire thing. There's also this little arrow and the squiggly. It's kind of important. So time gets appended right here. So time will be appended right here, and it'll go into this. It will uh, get renamed as t. It'll go here, and it'll get processed. And then that seconds result will then flow into digital clock face. And if I generate some code, I press F4 to change mode, and I change to the save and compile mode. Then I have this generated code right here, and I can copy it into uh, command C, command V, control D, control D, and I have my clock here, and you can see the second <coughs> is flowing into the digital clock face down here. Uh, so uh, I guess right now I'd like to tell you how, what the setup is. It's just my website plus a bash script which you can find in the documentation on the website at the bottom of the, on the, bottom of the intro. So that's nothing special that I have there. It's just a simple bash script. Uh, now let's uh, look at putting different languages in here. Uh, so I have uh, F4 code. Uh, let's find something interesting. Okay. I guess I'll start with just seconds. Uh, so. I could rewrite the seconds function in a reverse Polish notation. Uh, and it might uh, look a little bit better because I have some, some uh, aliases set up to make it easier to do arithmetic in Elm. Because Elm isn't exactly the best at doing arithmetic um, because of the need to round things and to float things. So it's often nice to have a DSL for something like arithmetic. And that's what this reverse Polish notation is. Mm. So let me see here. We are going to put time on the stack. We're going to apply in seconds to it. Uh, so this period right here uh, pops the stack and applies it to the function that follows. Two periods would pop two things from the stack and apply them to the second it's, uh, the <coughs> function that follows. The reason why I made this change from normal reverse Polish notation is because, of course, we have first class functions in a functional programming language. And so you can't just assume that a plus being added to the stack is actually a function application. Uh, and then uh, what <coughs> happens next? We, we round that, so we pop it again round, uh, and then we put 60 on the stack and we take the remainder, right? Uh, six, uh, 60 dot pop pop remainder. Everything is separated by spaces. We delete the Elm code, and then we press <coughs> enter to apply this, and we move over to the language mode, and we set the language mode to, mode to our reverse Polish notation. It's named after Evan. <laughs> uh, and then we can compile it uh, by copying this. 
control C, control V, uh, uh, and we see that we didn't break anything, which is good. <laughs> so basically we did nothing, which is what we wanted to do. But it looks a bit nicer, I, I hope, maybe. <laughs> Let's look, is it actually any nicer? Um, uh, where was that? That was second? Uh, wait. Did I do nothing? Did it? Ah, here we are. It looks like this instead of what it looks like before, which isn't actually that much nicer, but at least it fits on the screen. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if you guys understand how, how Visual Elm works yet, but I'll continue by showing you uh, how I might start designing a program. I hope I have some time. Okay, so, wait, I was command up, oh, try Elm here. Okay, so, to design a program in Visual Elm, uh, main F9, wait, I have two mains now, that's bad. Uh, that's okay though, I can go to delete and delete main, and it deletes one of them. <laughs> so, uh, so if I want to do a graph where I have foo, bar, baz, uh, and uh, foo, uh, so baz flows into foo, I'll change to the parents setting, and I put baz as the parent of foo. And now you can see, if I were to update this, I have to move around because my update code is buggy. Uh, but now you see that baz is red when I have foo selected, so that baz is flowing <coughs> into foo. Uh, main is going, foo and bar are going to flow into foo, uh, main, so, uh, and so now I have a signal graph, right? And I can add another node, uh, gob, uh, and I can make uh, bar, both bar and baz require gob, and uh, and now I really have a signal graph, right? So you can see how I can build a signal graph in this, and I don't have to actually fill in my nodes yet. I can think about my program in the same way as Jeff would draw up the program with the boxes without any pseudocode on the whiteboard. And then I can think about the algorithms later. Or I can even like dole that out to a, so uh, to a software engineer uh, person. I can be the software architect, be super smart. Uh, and you know, just like those empty class files that you got when you were programming in Java uh, from the architect and you were supposed to fill in the algorithms and you found out that there was some parameter missing and you were screwed. <laughs> so uh, that's visual or that's graphical Elm. So I don't really have much more to present. Is that sufficient? <laughs> yes, it's all written in Elm, and it only works because of a bug in Elm. <laughs> Uh, that uh, the fields uh, don't, that uh, when a signal comes through the graph, the fields don't get re redone unless they were somehow explicitly affected. And so these fields, even like if I start uh, typing in foo uh, and then I move around, you see that this field, the foo, this field doesn't get flanked, even though I've sent more signals through the graph. And this wasn't exactly part of the semantic definition of the field, though I don't think it's actually that bad. <laughs> oh no, it's not. You just, you just think of it like, like this web page, right? I'm scrolling around the web page. You can think of this web page as being modified. It's like an object that you put out of the graph and it can be played with, and then it can send signals back. Anyways, that's irrelevant. <laughs>
but it's a bug and it allows complex interfaces to be de developed that wouldn't be possible <laughs> if the bug wasn't there. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh, I'm not done yet. Uh, I have one more thing. Uh, hopefully those won't crap out too much. Uh, it's, my pr it's my idea of how uh, the Elmio domain should be used. <laughs> <laughs> This is written in Elm, too. <laughs> the future was yesterday. Welcome to hypertime. <laughs> I, I'm making fun of Sud here because they, they had the saying, the future is now, so we're even better. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I'm done. So I have a question. Can you make bin binding? Can I make bin binding? <laughs> I can't because I think that when I do the last key press thing, the letters don't come through. Mm.